Hello, welcome to Studio Radiolaria. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Python inside Grasshopper to make infinite loops like the one you see up here. And uh, we're going to use ChatGPT and then I'll show you how to hook it all up inside Grasshopper. So let's get started. ChatGPT, where I have the prompt that I wrote. Um, so I said, can you write a Python script that takes a list of curves, outputs loops of the curves changing to random colors, and then breaks when a Boolean value is changed to false? Um, and it tells me, sure. It has some steps here to take uh, the code that it wrote, and then uh, the inputs and outputs that I need over in Grasshopper. So I'm gonna copy the code that it wrote, and then I'm going to show you the other steps that it suggested and a few other little things that you need to do. Uh, let's start by deleting uh, the code that I wrote previously and starting from scratch. Here we go. So there's a blank canvas now. What I'm going to start with is the Python node in uh, maths. So let's open that up, delete the original, paste in our chat GPT script, and then now I'll go over what these mean. So these are the libraries we need. Uh, these are two or s oh no, these are different. So it needs the color library and the random library uh, to make random colors. So the main definition is going to take in two variables, curves and break loop. Curves is going to be the, a variable that we define as curves. It's going to be a list that's important. And then break loop is an integer. It's going to create a colors variable, and that's what it's going to return to us at the end. Uh, right here it says if we don't have break loop breaking, basically if we tell it to, to go, uh, then for the amount of curves in this curves component, it's going to give a, a red, green, and blue value. It's going to be like a, co a color, RGB color, um, and return that to us. So that all looks good. I'm going to hit OK here. We have to now set up those variables. Let's see what those are again, just so I can. So first is curves, X we'll call curves. Got to spell that correctly, that's important. Y is going to be our break loop and make sure you spell it with the same capitals. Python, usually you capitalize second, third, fourth, etc. words just for legibility. So that looks correct. And then out, this out is for uh, diagnostics. That's a little bit advanced when you start writing stuff for your colleagues and friends <laughs> to use your scripts. Uh, so A is gonna turn into colors because that's the value that we're passing out. Okay, so we test, we solve a problem. The problem is we have to define these so that it knows what to take in. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn curves. You need to go to type hint, and that will give you a list of, of different kinds of inputs, uh, floats, booleans, you know. So type hint is going to be, I'm gonna make circles, so circle would work, but curve is a little more generic, so I'm gonna use that. Then it can be any lines that will change the colors. It will be cool, happy, great. Um, and then, we know that we don't just want one curve. It, it's gonna be a list of curves. So to have an input that's a list, we also have to give it list access, that's important. Um, and then break loop is just gonna be type hint boolean, because boolean is true or false, one or, one or zero. Uh, the output, it knows what the output is because it was defined in the script. So let's start out with a boolean toggle. And I'm gonna set that to true, so it is breaking the loop. So right now it's not letting anything into the loop. And then for the curves, I'm just gonna make a series of circles, and we're gonna use, did I spell that wrong? No, it's wrong. Of circles, and we're gonna use the center normal radius circle. Our center is gonna be the origin, 
zero, zero, zero. The normal is, since we're on the top, normal starts by default in the xy plane, pointing in the z direction, so it's pointing to the screen, which is perfect. Um, and then the radius is going to be this series. But we don't want to start on zero because a zero radius circle is undefined. So let's just start with some random number and then let's copy that and make that the, the step size and the count is 10. I'm, I'm just going to make it somewhere from one to a hundred. Let's make it 10, but at least we have a slider now so we can control that. Pop that into radius and we have our circles. Great. So we can make as many of those as we want, spread them out a little bit, have the first one start at a different size. Perfect. Now we can take these and you know what? I'm going to add a little move component. Uh, and let's get another series of those. Let's copy paste this one into the step size. The count should be the same because I'm moving the same number of circles. So let's make the start zero. Uh, and then I'm going to move them. Let's, let's move them to left and right. Let's do an X unit X. Okay, so we have this many. It's going to move this much in the X direction. That's our, and then we put our circle in there. So if I turn this off, now we have a circle that we can move around. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to make it go to minus 10 just for symmetry. Okay, great. So now we can play around with that too. Uh, kind of like a tunnel effect. Um, so we have our curves. Now this is going to output colors. So what I want to do is throw down a preview node, custom preview, first into the curves and you'll see if we start to, oh, one last thing. We need to get the trigger. And if you look for timer, it, you're going to be disappointed. I spent <laughs> more minutes than I want to admit looking for timer when I should have been looking for trigger. There's your hot tip for the day. Um, if you turn it on and off, you can enable and disable the, the node here. This next one changes it from manual to timed and then play and stop. So right now it's playing. If I start this, I'm going to get a list of colors. I wonder if I drop a panel, if that panel. Yeah. Okay. So that's showing you it's changing. Um, I'm going to change this interval to 100. Yeah, so that shows you it's changing constantly. Um, so now what we can do is take these colors and apply them in our custom preview to our circles. And there you go. So you have a list of constantly changing colors and that's all still hooked up to the functionality of Grasshopper that you get with a normal script. Cool. If you like what you saw here uh, and are also interested in Grasshopper to digital fabrication, I will be making some videos like that. So subscribe so you don't miss those.